So Paul, it strikes me that spectroscopy would be really useful here as almost everything has a has a, a signature of light that you can identify it. We can identify almost anything if we can only have a spectrum of what's going on, but it's not going to be easy. Yes, because now you've got not merely got to measure the total brightness, but the brightness broken down to the wavelength bins. But it has been done, so the idea is you wait until the planet is just outside the secondary eclipse, take a spectrum, and then when it's in secondary eclipse you take a spectrum, so the spectrum when it's just outside will be the starlight plus the planet light. When the planet's behind it'll be just the starlight. You subtract one off the other and hope for the difference is the spectrum of the actual planet. And here's one. Okay, uh, okay, let's see. So this is in the infrared. They're claiming they see a bump here. I see. So the idea is that you don't see anything, you don't see anything, and then you see a little bump of emission of something. Uh, you really have to be a true believer, I think, uh, to, to, to believe that. Um, well, hmm. they claim it's real. Um, any one of these individual points is only about one error bar above, so that being there's a 32% chance it could be outside the error bars, but there's a quite a number of points up here, so maybe if you add them up, and if you really believe you've got your systematic errors under control, maybe it's real. But they claim this is the right wavelength to be a feature from silicon, so very suggestive okay. from other reasons there might be silicate clouds in these things. It could be looking at this hot Jupiter, which actually, again, has silicate, you know, glass or quartz clouds in the atmosphere, and what we're actually looking at is a bump in the spectrum at a, just below 10 microns caused by silicates. All right, so here we're looking in the infrared for something that is emitting in that line, sort of like a neon sign emits a, a, yeah. a, a, a line of neon. It'd be nice if we could do something in absorption. Right, that sounds easier to me. Well, first of all, because the, the primary eclipse that goes in front is much deeper, so you're looking at a much bigger effect. And in principle, you can, because here, I mean, here's a picture of Saturn taken by the Cassini space probe and the sun was on the other side of it. And what you can see is a little glowing arc around the side here which is the light of the sun refracting through the atmosphere. It's like all the sun sets on Saturn at the same time. So the beauty of this, you've got the light of the star shining through. And of course, when we see things, this one, Saturn completely eclipses the sun. But in reality, what you'll see is mm. you're going to actually see light coming through. You'll see the light of the star at the same time. And then you'll see the absorptive fingerprint of material. Yeah, so what it kind of, another way to think of it is the radius of the planet might differ as a function of wavelength. At wavelengths where the atmosphere is transparent, it'll just be the radius of whatever solid or the cloud banks. At other wavelengths where the, uh, the gas in the atmosphere absorbs, um, the radius might get a little bit bigger. So you'll see a bigger dip at some wavelengths than others. So once again, you take the spectrum when the planet is not in front of the stars, it's just a star spectrum. And when the planet's just in front of the star, you'll get a star spectrum minus a bit of light from the planet. And that light that you've taken off may vary as a function of wavelength, depending on the atmosphere, because of this arc around the side. OK, so sounds like a, a promising way forward. So what have we seen? Well, here's one result in a very recent paper. Um, what we're looking at here is carbon monoxide. So here's a spectrum, and you can see there's a little bit of a dip along there. Once again, it's not something you'd uh, want to write okay, home I about. I can see it. There's a real smudge Well, that's actually there. a simulation. It's not real data. Okay. These are the real data. Well, I sort of see it. I, I reckon that looks better to me than the previous one. Yes, and what you're seeing here is the darkness along there. It's a sloping line. The reason it's a sloping line is as it goes in front of the star, its velocity is changing. So it's if it was just going straight in front like this, the velocity wouldn't change, but it's actually doing a circle, so it's going away and towards. So you're getting a bit of a slant across so, here. So this diagram, just to be clear, is plotting how bright the area of CO is, mm -hmm. that, the little signature of CO. This is the wavelength along yeah. here. Yep. So this is wavelength, or actually measuring, in some sense, the velocity. Mm -hmm. And then this is telling you what phase in the orbit it is. And so we do expect there to be a change because the object is moving. Okay. Yeah. So what you're seeing is the right pattern here from the Doppler effect. As yep. the velocity of the planet relative to the star changes, you expect the line to slope, and it slopes in exactly the right way, which is looking good. So this planet looks like it has CO in it. But there's a little surprise in here. It turns out that the velocity, while it's sloping the right way, is not quite at the right place. It's a bit different from the velocity of the star. Oh. By about 2 kilometers a second, that's about 7,000 kilometers an hour. What it seems to be is that the CO is not just sitting and the planet's atmosphere. It's actually moving from the hot side to the cold side at about seven or 8,000 kilometers per hour. 
Wow, so our jet stream is maybe 350 kilometers per hour. So this is 20 times faster than the fastest stuff we see on yeah, Earth. Yeah, it's even you know, seven or eight times faster than the winds on Jupiter, which are much stronger than the winds on Earth. And Jupiter is orbiting very quickly, so this is pretty funny. Yep, so it looks like at least at the altitude where you're getting carbon monoxide, we're seeing an incredibly fast wind from the day side to the night side in this case. Hmm, okay. Here's another surprising case. Uh, in this case, um, the planet causes a typically sort of half percent dip. But if you look not at the general optical wavelength, you can look at the wavelength of where you get absorption from hydrogen. This is actually an ultraviolet, so it has to be done with the Hubble Space Telescope because the ultraviolet can't penetrate the Earth's atmosphere. But if you look at the Lyme and Alpha Lyme, which is where an electron jumps from level 2 to 1 of hydrogen, um, which is in the ultraviolet, 121.6 nanometers, something I spent a lot of my life working on. Yes. Um, instead of blocking you know, half a percent of the light, this thing's blocking 15 percent of the light of the star when it goes in front. So it can't be that its atmosphere puffs up to 15 percent of the radius of the star. That seems crazy. Yeah, so maybe that would be able to do it. A planet that's got an atmosphere this big of hydrogen, but yep. more likely what's happening is an atmosphere that big of hydrogen wouldn't stay there, get blown away. Yeah. So our best guess is what's actually happening is an evaporating planet. It's losing huge amounts of hydrogen and producing almost a cometary tail of the stuff. So as it goes in front, you get this huge amount of hydrogen absorption plus a small amount of absorption all solid wavelengths caused by that stuff. Okay, so this, this planet sounds to me like it's going to be doomed if it's losing too quickly. I guess it really depends on how, how quickly it really is losing it because hydrogen in that Lyme and Alpha line is so sensitive you just need a little bit of hydrogen and it really is good at taking out all the light. Yep, so we've had a planet with incredible winds, we've got an evaporating planet, but even it turns out seeing nothing can be interesting at times. Here, um, is, remember we had two possible models for these super Earths that might be a potential water planet, one of which had a hydrogen helium atmosphere, one of which was mostly water and water vapor all the way out. and. For one of these things, people have tried to measure the transits at different wavelengths. So you can see going from the red, well, these are actually all red wavelengths, but slightly less red to slightly more red. And you can right. see the dip of the transit. And you can compare the shapes of all these things at different wavelengths here. So what they've done is they fitted the average of all these things and taken it off. And what you can see is the transit actually looks exactly the same all the way from 1,000 nanometers down to 780 nanometers. Okay, so that means that the, the planet is really exactly the same color at all these different wavelengths. Now that's kind of, well, I mean, yeah. it is interesting. Of course. If you've got a water surface or a cloud surface, that's fine. Yeah. Clouds absorb or a solid surface absorbs at all wavelengths. But if it had mostly a hydrogen atmosphere, it would not be like this. It would absorb more at some than others. Right, because hydrogen ends up having this, this signature of, in this case, scattering at some point. And yeah. So it would change things. Okay, so that's telling us that this object is interesting perhaps maybe it has a dense shroud of clouds you know interestingly enough clouds turn out very conveniently for astronomers because they're around uh, they really have uh, no color to them so when we look through the atmosphere they're effectively a neutral density filter hmm. that you would use on your camera that doesn't change the color Yep, so whatever it is in this particular possibly water world something with the right density to be a water world I don't know whatever it is in its atmosphere something that doesn't have different effects at different wavelengths. Yeah. So not conclusive yet, but beginning to give us some interesting results. Okay, that would be interesting to see if there are more of these.